and welcome back to Nerdy Nerds. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Friday, which means it is Fallout Fridays. And today I've got something really cool that I want to show you. But before I do, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who has sat at home watching the channel and given just tremendous support over the last few weeks. It's been absolutely incredible. I can't thank you enough. But there's one person that I need to thank above everyone else, and that is my girlfriend. Because a lot of these things that I've received for Christmas or my birthdays, they're what I'm showing off in these videos. And I can't thank her enough. She has literally been my rock in all of this. And usually what I'll do is I'll do a Christmas video and I'll show everyone what I got around Christmas. Um, but obviously I didn't record for a few months, which meant that I missed that video. Um, and a lot of these things are things that I received for Christmas and I didn't show you yet. And I'm really excited to show you. And I just, I just have to thank her for it. She's been nothing but supportive. And unfortunately, because my mind goes 100 miles an hour doing these intros, I failed to thank her in the past. So today I just want to make a massive, massive statement and just say thank you so, so much for everything you've done. And, uh, and today I've got something else that she did get me for Christmas. And I'm going to show you guys right now. It is the Fallout chest set. In here, all of the pieces are sculpted. They look absolutely amazing. I don't know if they're specifically sculpted. They, they, they're printed or they're, they're something. Um, but everything is like it, its own character. It is really quite sick. So I'm going to get this over to the corner in just a second. But I want to say one more time, thank you to everyone and thank you to Sam. I'll see you over in the corner in just a sec. Right then, here we are. We have ourselves the Fallout chest set. Now, inside of here is really quite cool. So I'm not going to waste any time. I'm going to crack it straight open and start showing you guys. So let me move this to the side. So here are like the instructions on how to play chess. And there's a little bit of a, a sneaky peek of some of the pieces here. Um, but if you don't know how to play chess, I recommend that you learn because it is one of those games that is extremely frustrating when you're learning how to play it. But once you get good at it, it is one of those, it's just really quite cool. It's a lot of thinking, a lot of thought goes into it. You've got to be many steps ahead of your opponent, uh, kind of like snooker in a sense, but obviously on, on a board. Um, let me get this out. There's a bit of a sneak peek there. Uh, and I'm going to move that just to the side for a second. And let me show you guys the actual chessboard. Now, it is a fold-out chessboard, which you would expect from most uh, most chess sets. But um, if I'm being honest with you, I would have quite liked an actual wooden chessboard. I know I'm being really sort of extendedly picky there, which I, I'll be honest, this is good enough and this is really cool and I like the aesthetic of it. They've done it in a kind of rusted and rustic and, and do you know like how you get like a, when you used to make pirate maps and stuff and you'd use like a tea bag to try and make it look aged and older? That's kind of what they've done here. It is really quite sick. Um, and they've got the, the vault Tech logos over here. So I do believe they've kind of gone for what they would have put inside the vaults. And this is like obviously after either hundreds of years of it being inside a vault or whatever the sort of period of time they've gone for. So I think this would kind of match what they would have had inside the vaults. I just kind of wish there was a more sturdy chessboard. And I know I'm probably being picky there and I, I don't deserve to be picky. This is really cool enough. Um, and when I get to the pieces, you'll see just what I mean. Um, but what I'll do is I'm going to move this out of the way. I think this will kind of overshadow what the pieces look like. And I'll kind of leave a little slot out like this so that you guys can see the chessboard along the side here. I think that looks quite cool. Um, but let me get you some of the pieces. Now, I'll show you the pawns first. Oh my God, I've dropped one. So here are the pawns. Now, the pawns come in male and female uh, orientations. I don't know how I'm what I'm going for there. So variations are male and female. Uh, so these are the this is the good team. So these are vault dwellers. So the pawns on this side are vault dwellers. And then when you get over to the the, the essentially the bad team. Uh, so this is the what this is the black side and that's the white side. Uh, so these are then raiders. And uh, marauders, essentially. And as you can see, I mean, look at the detail on them. This one's got like the the the, the cowl, the the cowl armor. Uh, I'm not sure what the actual armor is called. Um, but if you actually look at the the female one, she's got the spiked armor. Uh, and I know that is just the raider spiked armor. So that is quite sick. And they both holding their guns. I was quite shocked to see that the vault dwellers are also holding guns. I know it kind of fits like the actual board game itself. Um, 
but it's weird that they're holding guns. I know that obviously vaults do have weapons, uh, but you don't tend to see them fighting off too much. Not not all the time anyway. So yeah, so they're going to be popped just on the chessboard here. Um, and what I'll do is every time I open something or I get something else out, I'll put it on the chessboard. It's not going to be in the correct place right now. I'm just going to get them on the chessboard to be there. Um, but at the end, then I'll get a shot of everything on the chessboard altogether. So it'll look really quite cool. Um, and then we'll go for the white team again. And this time we've got the rooks. And these are Mr. Handies. So we get two of these, obviously two rooks per board. And if you can get in there, I will also get some additional shots so that you guys can see these properly. And I'm not sure if they're, they're fully in focus. So I'll, I'll make sure I get some additional shots anyway. Um, but these are incredible. And, and if you look at the way he sort of floating i'm not sure what he's floating on let me have a little look it kind of looks like he's that's just yeah i think if you painted this that would kind of be like jet fire like jet fuel coming out of his out of his base and he's sort of floating about that is really quite sick i'm gonna make sure i get better shots for you because i'm not sure how this is showing off on the camera um, and i'm also not aware of how much this is possibly covering some of the images so hopefully it's not clashing too much i know with the uh the black team it kind of might be uh, and then obviously on the other team then we have protectrons again these could have been on either side i suppose because you can sort of take charge of a protectron but they are usually an enemon an enemon a protect a protectron and an enemy i <laughs> can't speak very difficult to speak um but yeah again very cool very detailed it's hard to get a full sort of on the camera, I'm not sure if you can see all the nooks and crannies that really quite go into these. Um, but like I said, I'll make sure I get some shots so you can actually see it. But there's the there's the rooks right there. And they are extremely, extremely sick. But now we're going to get on to the big pieces. And they are just by here. So we're going to start off with uh, the knights. So we'll do knights next. And here they are. So these are the sentry bots. Um, and I'm going to show you the one off because it's easier to show you just the one. Uh, so the sentry bot, very large. If you look at its legs, they are very, very chunky. You're not going to break this very easily. Um, and again, there's so many little nooks and crannies on this guy. And you can see his little Gatling gun by here. Extremely, extremely cool. And his laser, I think that's his laser gun and this is his Gatling gun. I'm almost tempted to get somebody to paint these for me. I have a friend who, who paints miniatures, so it, it could be quite a cool idea, but they do have like a bit of a rusted look to them. Um, and obviously, if we're gonna play as black team and white team, it kind of makes sense to keep them in the shades that they're in. However, I, I do think they would look quite cool painted. I don't know if that's the right decision, and I probably won't end up doing it, um, but it, it, I think it would look quite cool. Uh, so then we've got the knights on the white side and i guess you can guess who they're going to be they are the brotherhood of steel so this is i think the t51 power armor i'm not quite sure i think they're fallout 3 characters i'm not don't quote me on that i could be completely wrong um but i'm, I'm pretty confident they are fallout 3 characters but again I'll have to make sure I do some due diligence and check later on. I'll put it in the comments when I find out what they are. Um, but again, I, I'm, I'm a little bit on the fence of whether or not these should be painted. Because if you look at the detail on them, there is tons. But it will pop off so much more painted than it ever will as just a white character. Um, but I, I do think it would look quite sick painted. So let me pop that just there for a second. And now we're going to get to the bishops. So the bishops on the black side are ghouls. They are feral ghouls. So you get two feral ghouls. Again, you get two sentry bots and two uh, two knights of uh, the, the Brotherhood of Steel. I can't speak. Uh, it's because I'm concentrating so much on, on what the camera's seeing. I'm struggling to get both places. So these are feral ghouls. Again, you could paint these to be glowing ones if you if you so wished. Um, but I think on the back they are they are described as just basic feral ghouls. Um, but I, I just think they're really quite cool. They've even got all the muscle sort of action going on on the back there. All the details of where the skin would be ripping off. Absolutely sick. I don't know if you can quite see its face. I'm not sure how much is uh, it's going to, to zoom in properly. But I'll try and get really good shots so that you guys can see it properly. Um, and now we have the bishops for the white side. Um, and I can't quite see who these guys are. 
Oh, they're Brotherhood of Steel scribes. Okay, so they're scribes from the Brotherhood of Steel. Uh, I mean, I, I, I suppose, what else are they going to use? Uh, they pop him down by there. Um, so, yeah, these, I, if I'm not wrong, are like the historians of the Brotherhood of Steel, the ones that sort of take all the... Uh, all of the pieces that the the knights bring back and sort of make notes. Um, I could be wrong again, and I usually am. Um, but that is what I have in my memory of them being. But again, really cool. Not quite as cool as some of the other ones, but still cool. Um, and I'm putting them off camera, and I do apologise. So there is the the scribe. And now we get to the fun ones. Now we get to the really really fun ones. So we're gonna go for the black team first. Um, and we're going to go for the king, I believe. Yeah, so we'll do king first. So who else would the king be if not a super mutant? How sick is this? I'll tell you what would have been quite cool, and I think it would have probably... Uh, it would have been too big. Um, would have been to have the super mutants as one of the smaller characters, maybe as the bishops or the knights or whatnot, and then as super mutant behemoth as the uh, as the king i think that would have been quite sick as well um but again super mutant bite here fully armored he's got his big uh, just i think that's a wrench or some sort of hammer um absolutely cool as hell and again painted would look unreal um but the king is a super mutant and if you can guess what the queen is i'll give you absolutely nothing because i haven't got anything to give you but here is the death claw the death claw for me, it just outdoes it all. It is absolutely unreal. It looks the part. It has even spiky horns. And it's just, it, it's got the full malice of a death claw. It really does look the part. And I, I really, I, I can't think this is the coolest more than I do. It just looks unreal. It really does look unreal. And it's got the sort of thick body that you'd come to expect from a death claw. It kind of feels like a Fallout 4 death claw, even though obviously the Fallout 3 ones are just low definition. This is why they probably don't look as good as the Fallout 4 ones. Um, but the death claw is absolutely unreal. And like I keep saying it over and over again, but painted would look silly cool. Um, but that is the queen for the, uh, for the black side. Now, let me show you the king and queen for the uh for the the white team now if you can guess i'm gonna let i'm gonna give you guys a few seconds between each so you have got time to guess in the comments of what you think the king and queen are um i think it's quite obvious what the king is but can you guess what the queen is so i'll show you the king first the king is the vault dweller um and it is this is the the vault dweller there isn't a number on the back which makes me believe that they're not trying to like cement this with any of the games they're just kind of letting this be its own standing thing um which is really cool in its own right but this is the vault dweller and i'm gonna say it's the vault dweller from fault three uh, from vault what from, from fallout three um i believe it is if i'm if i'm wrong i'm wrong but it i just it just feels like this is a fallout three set um but again it could be fallout four for all i know but there is the vault dweller as the king now the queen have you guys guessed it yet the queen is dog meat. <laughs> How sick is this? It's dog meat. How cool. This thing, right, I <laughs> I wasn't sure. When I first received this and I saw the back and I saw that the queen was dog meat, I thought, yo... That is quite sick. But I thought, I, I really was curious at how good these statues were going to be when they're in your hand. Because you know what it's like. Quite often you'll have sets like these that have the gimmick of being part of a game. But they don't quite put the effort into making the pieces look good enough. Um, but I think they've really done a good job. And the fact that Dogmeat is like climbing on a little rock. And he's, he just looks cute as ever. I just think it's really quite sick. So yeah, there is our queen. And it is Dogmeat. So I'm going to go now. I'm going to put all these in the right positions. And I'll show you what the whole chess set looks like. As just a big piece of chess set. <laughs> what? I don't know what that means. But yeah, I'm going to get them all now. I'll put it all in the right places. And then you guys can get a look of what it looks like as an actual chess set. Uh, but while I do that, I'm just going to say a massive thank you to everyone who's joined me today. And I will see you guys in the next one. And please enjoy the images that I'll share in just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you soon. Cheers! <laughs>
why not subscribe? If you enjoyed that video, why not subscribe? It'll help me and Natty continue to do the work that we're doing, and hopefully you'll enjoy it. Thanks!